And like Lee said, I work for the Kenai Mountains Turnigan Arm National Heritage Area as the Anchorage Outdoor School Program Manager. Um, and here with me today is a few friends and colleagues in the Anchorage Outdoor School Program. And uh, I'd like to thank Lee also for, for having us here this week. We're really happy to have a platform to share with you all about outdoor schools. So we're gonna start off the presentation with a short video that was made by another one of our partners, Adrian McGill. Um, so Jessica, if you can pull that up, uh, this will give you all a, a really great sense of what the Anchorage Outdoor School Program is all about. Unmute Jessica. Does that work for everybody? Can you guys hear me? Oh, yep. Okay, and can you see the presentation? Yep. Okay, sorry about that. A year of Zoom and you think I know better. Here we go. Hi, I'm Adrian McGill. I'm the Vegas Fox Visitor Center Director in the Chugach National Forest. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about a program that we now host at the Vegas Fox Visitor Center a project that started as an idea in 2017 and became a reality in 2019. It's currently on pause due to COVID, but we're looking forward to hosting it again in the near future. A little background on the Baggage Fogs Visitor Center or BBVC. During normal seasons, we are open to the public between Memorial Day weekend and Labor Day. So when Anchorage Outdoor School takes place, this three-day, two-night program does not interrupt our season. In fact, it adds to our education programs and helps bring sustainability to our visitor center. I might be a little biased, but in my opinion, BBBC is the perfect site for outdoor school. It's a great location to achieve Anchorage Outdoor School's mission of cultivating lifelong stewards of public lands in Alaska through residential place-based outdoor education for fifth grade students in the Anchorage School District. It is a place to connect students with curiosity and wonder that only the outdoors can inspire. It started as a one week pilot in the spring of 2019, followed by three weeks of pilot the following fall. Each session we learned and improved and are now out of the pilot phase. Also, Kenai Mountain Turnigan Arm Natural Heritage Area became the official home for Anchorage Outdoor School in the winter of 2019 and has dedicated resources to managing Anchorage Outdoor School, including hiring a program manager, providing stability and fundraising capabilities we did not have previously. It starts at the schools. The teachers are very involved in the process by speaking with parents and preparing their students. AOS educators host a meeting at the school with parents to answer their questions. These educators also go into the classroom before and after outdoor school to lead activities and complete a pre and post test mind mapping activity. What we found was on average 43% of students demonstrated a greater understanding of environmental connections after outdoor school. When the students buses arrive, they are greeted outside the visitor center by Anchorage Outdoor School staff. We sing them a welcome song, then they learn some ground rules, sing songs, play games, and learn about their den groups and field study groups. Essentially, we get the students super excited for what's coming over the next few days. Students sleep in den groups supervised by program staff. We have coyote, wolf, fox, and marmot dens. Their den group is where students have some downtime. Outdoor school can be very exciting, but also very exhausting for students. So dens allow them time to rest and relax, as well as prepare skits and songs for evening campfire programs. The students also eat their meals with their den groups. Each den is assigned an area in the visitor center that is their sleeping area. Boys are in the theater and girls are in the exhibit hall. I would like to say the dens stay neat and organized, but most of the time it looks like the photo on the right. Students stay at the visitor center with program staff, while the teachers and other outdoor school staff stay at our bunkhouse. Being able to sleep overnight in the visitor center is great fun, but the core of Anchorage Outdoor School is our field studies. There are four field studies that each student participates in over the three days. We go out rain or shine, but we always have a backup plan if the weather gets too wet or too windy, which is common in Portage Valley. The four field studies focus on water, sense of place, forests, and glaciers and geology. 
the Glaciers and Geology Field Study, or Glorious Glaciers as we call it, will explore the specifics of the glaciers and geologic processes that are present in Portage Valley. This includes what glaciers are, parts of the glacier, and how the valley has been formed over time. Students may also learn about the properties of ice and icebergs, about ice worms, why the ice is blue, and erosion. The forest field study, or fabulous forests, explores the unique and dynamic characteristics of the forest ecosystem in Portage Valley. This includes native plants, animals, and ecosystem interconnections, such as trophic webs. Additional topics may include life cycles, predator-prey interactions, succession, adaptation, seasonal variation, and tracking. The water field study, or awesome aquatics, explores the hydrosphere that is present in Portage Valley and Portage Creek. This includes life within the creek, water cycles, and watersheds. Additional topics could include the life cycle of salmon, water quality, water dynamics, and weather. And the sense of place lesson, or Portage is Place, explores the unique and defining characteristics of Portage Valley. This includes geographic location, physical geography, and human environment interactions. Additional topics may include human history and culture, biodiversity, soundscapes, weather, climate change, and land use. Each afternoon, the students have recreation time. AOS is coordinated through the Health and PE Department of Anchorage School District, and between field studies and recreation time, we have achieved the standards required for this field trip. Recreation time can range from games with capture the flag to nature art and bird identification. Teachers, AOS program staff, support staff, as well as outside partners lead recreation time activity. And of course, it wouldn't be complete without campfire programs. We have a campfire each night, weather permitting, and encourage all students to sing songs or perform in a skit. Typically, the first night is mostly program staff, and the second night is mostly student presentations. It's a lot of fun, and our district ranger usually drops by to sing the song he wrote for outdoor school. And even if students were a little apprehensive or too cool for school at the start, by the end of outdoor school, they are singing songs, being silly, and really having a great time. When we ask whether they would tell other students to come to our outdoor school, some responses include, I would tell students to come because it's so much fun and you get to watch a movie, explore, and sleep. Or, yes, because it's very fun. And before any of us realize it, the three days are over and the students are loading up the buses to go back to their school. Like when they arrive, all the staff are outside and we sing them a song and get silly right up until the end when they're pulling away. And then it's just the staff. And there are a lot of staff required to make Anchorage Outdoor School a success. From taking night watch shifts to serving meals and snacks or lighting the campfire or providing first aid, this program requires a lot of involvement from many partners. KMTA now manages the program, but there is an advisory group that is involved in the planning for months, as well as additional staff that are on site just when the students are there. Anchorage Outdoor School's fall pilot alone had 17 different partners involved in different capacities, including those you see on your screen involved in the advisory group, but also including BLM, National Park Foundation, Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center, Alaska Public Lands Information Center, Campbell Creek Science Center, Whittier Tunnel, Alaska State Parks Kids Don't Float Program, Spoons Catering, and REI. New partners like Alaska Department of Fish and Game have also become involved. And even though it's a lot of work and involves a lot of coordination, I cannot wait until we can safely host the next group of Anchorage Outdoor School fifth graders at the Baggage Bugs Visitor Center. Thank you for listening. Have a great day. All right, so big thanks to Adrian for that, that awesome video. Hope you all enjoyed it. So I'm gonna spend the next 15 minutes or so just kind of popping the hood open on outdoor school and giving you all a little bit more information about um, all of the work and thoughtfulness that goes into making this program. Um, so Jessica, go ahead, next slide. So the Anchorage Outdoor School, um, as we've said, is a program of the Kenai Mountains Turnigan Arm National Heritage Area. It is sponsored through the Anchorage School District and overseen by an advisory group of representatives from partner agencies and organizations. It has been held in each spring and fall at the Baggage Bogs Visitor Center out in Portage. And our mission is to cultivate lifelong stewardship of public lands in Alaska through residential place-based outdoor education for fifth graders. Next slide. 
So Adrian gave a great overview of what this program looks like. And hopefully you could see from the video that there's a lot of heart and hard work that goes into making this program a success. Um, some of these photos she had in her slideshow, um, but hopefully it just gives you a really great look um, at how much fun we have over the course of the three days of the program. So what I'm gonna talk about during my section of the presentation is some of the major themes that really connect the entire outdoor school experience together. So we have five major themes that we focus on over the course of the program. So these themes are stewardship, scientific practices, health and well-being, outdoor recreation, and connection to place. So I'm gonna spend a little bit of time sort of unpacking each theme and talking about what it looks like in practice during outdoor school. So the first theme is stewardship. And this is really a very key part of outdoor school and our outdoor school program. So I really like this quote from the Alaska Natural Resource and Environmental Literacy Plan that really speaks to the outdoor heritage and economic future, depending on Alaskan students being able to make informed decisions when it comes to natural resources and managing our public lands. So we at Outdoor School use a residential model to both improve students' knowledge and appreciation of Alaska's natural beauty and natural resources, but also to expose students to nature through experiential learning. Okay? And we also collaborate with multiple agencies and organizations to model a variety of career opportunities for fifth grade students. So they know what, what their choices are and they might be exposed to careers that they might not have ever even know existed. So what does this look like in practice at outdoor school? Students are engaging in conversations and activities with field instructors, with their program staff, with their peers on the topic of stewardship. And these conversations are informed by both Western and indigenous knowledge and practices. All students throughout outdoor school, they even invent a stewardship superhero identity that embodies the actions that they can take to be good stewards of Alaska's lands, resources, and culture. Next slide. Okay. The second theme is connection to place. So we really rely heavily on a place-based education philosophy. And um, we really do see it as being able to straddle the divide between formal and informal education. Um, and the opportunities as it relates to place-based education, they are endless. Um, so this focus on experiential hands-on learning, it really extends instruction beyond the classroom and it gives students the opportunity to engage directly with the natural world. They're learning science, ecological knowledge, history, career options, leadership, all skills that they need to better understand Alaska's natural resources and build resiliency in our changing world. So what does this look like at outdoor school? Well, they're immersed in Portage Valley for three whole days with lots of opportunities to explore. They even have uh, the opportunity to practice creating place names that are inspired by the Denina naming system that reflects characteristics of each place and often references their relationship with the land and its abundant resources. They're exploring the concepts of interdependence and change through local investigation. And while Portage is just one many of the many incredible places in Alaska, we're hoping that it's these strong connections that they form here that manifest into this lifelong respect for and curiosity toward and active exploration of Alaska. All right, our next theme is scientific practices. So there's some great statistics here. Um, over three quarters of the fa 50 fastest growing occupations in Alaska require significant STEM skills. Natural resources makes up a huge percentage of our state's private sector jobs. Tourism is Alaska's largest renewable industry. And as of 2018, about one job in 10 in Alaska is tied to trip related outdoor recreation spending. So all of these industries, we want Alaskans to be employed in these positions. And in order for that to happen, they need to be problem solvers. They need to be autonomous learners. They have to be scientifically and mathematically literate and articulate. And these skills are developed through high quality, place-based and engaging curriculum. So, 
this really takes place, this type of learning takes place during our field studies. Field studies that are led by professionals and natural resources or recreation or education fields. And during these field studies, students are investigating multiple environments around Portage Valley. They're practicing skills like thinking like scientists or making observations, communicating their ideas or working as a team. And all of these are really essential skills in our 21st century job market. And they're strongly linked to learning STEM subjects. All right, our next slide is uh, all about health and well-being. So this quote really speaks to the core of what we're getting at as it relates to our program, right? And the challenge of raising knowledgeable, capable, caring, and responsible children. Like this doesn't just happen magically. And what the school district has found is that through thoughtful and sustained and systematic attention to social and emotional learning, lots of really good things happen. We see academic achievement increase, we see decrease in problem behaviors, and we see the quality of relationships surrounding each child improve. All things that I think we can all agree are really great things. Um, and so we really stand by and support the, the mission of the ASD Health and PE Department, providing students with both knowledge and opportunity to practice different skills and concepts and empowering them to kind of develop their own wellness practices. Um, so at Outdoor School, PE teachers are present and we very thoughtfully incorporated different social and emotional learning opportunities throughout the entire experience. And a residential camp format really does present a lot of excellent opportunities to engage in this social and emotional development. Okay, and our last theme is outdoor recreation. So for many of us Alaskans, um, being outdoors and engaging in outdoor activities like camping, skiing, biking, they're more than just our hobbies, they are our way of life. And our abundance of public lands really allow for active outdoor lifestyles that keep people physically, emotionally, and mentally healthy throughout the entire year. And in addition, being outdoors for many people isn't just about recreation, it's also about seasonal harvest, it's about subsistence, and it's about survival, right? So people in Alaska for thousands of years have lived off of the land and the protection of subsistence lifestyles and the cultural values that tie Alaskans to their land is really important as well. And I've included this graph from the uh, most recent outdoor participation report that's published by the Outdoor Foundation to illustrate how important it is to involve children in outdoor recreation activities for the health of the whole family and really our whole community. So it shows here where families without children have a participation rate of about 45%. That rate jumps up to 58% with families who have children between the ages of six and 12 which is right where um, our fifth grade students land. So it is participation among young people that really drives outdoor participation in general. So we know as Alaskans how important outdoor recreation is, but um, really getting kids involved in these different outdoor recreation activities will, will increase the involvement of you know, everyone else in their family and, and other people in their community. Okay, so just to summarize and give all of you the opportunity to see, see the five themes once more, um, connection to place, stewardship, scientific practices, health and well-being, and outdoor recreation are five key themes that we're thinking about at Outdoor School. And these things don't stand alone. They really reinforce and support one another um, and are, are creatively and meaningfully woven throughout the entire outdoor school experience. And when we created our outdoor school logo, we tried to incorporate each of these elements into the logo so that students could look at it and think back to their experiences during outdoor school and maybe see those various elements present in, uh, in the logo. So now I'd like to zoom out and, and kind of think about the big picture as it relates to connection to nature and the tangled threats that we see um, 
the two big ones that, that we see right now are the COVID-19 pandemic and challenges as it relates to equity. So um, what research has shown over the last few years and what we're gaining a better understanding of is that children from communities of color or low income communities, they tend to have less access to quality natural environments, experiences and programming. And this, these, these barriers to access that, that people from these communities experience, they're not solely physical. It's not just about how far they might live from a green space or a park or the national forest, but they're often social and cultural in addition and sometimes relate to discrimination. So I think that this is a really important thing to keep in mind when we're, you know, we're thinking about this, that um, there's sort of a variety of things taking place that are leading to things being the way that they are right now. And in addition to these, these threats of equity, we also have the threat of the COVID-19 pandemic, which we're all still in the middle of. And what the research has shown over the last handful of um, months has really reinforced what we have all been experiencing, that there have been significant negative impacts um, on the pandemic. And these stressors on children and adolescents, they really call for a robust public health response. They've seen that greater COVID restrictions are associated with declines in children's play. They're seeing that physical activity uh, during confinement or during uh, lockdown um, is linked to living conditions and that the post COVID world planning really requires attention to the nature related needs of children. So this is sort of the big picture general state of affairs. Let's see what this means for Alaskan students in particular. So um, I've provided some numbers here. So there are about 2,600 fifth grade students enrolled in ASD this year. And 50% of those students are enrolled as economically disadvantaged. So that's half, that's a pretty huge percentage. And then of the 61 elementary schools in the Anchorage School District, about a third of them are Title I elementary schools. So I think it's pretty safe to say that we have the population that was being described on the previous slide. And we're likely facing equity challenges here at home um, like many other places are facing. And then as it relates to the pandemic, being in Alaska for many of us was a savior. Um, it made pandemic restrictions far more bearable, having outdoor spaces so close and relatively speaking easy to get to. And having a smaller population, it made it easier to maintain social distancing when we did go outside. However, Alaskans have still been significantly affected by this pandemic in many ways. And that's especially true for our Alaskan students. So Alaskan students have spent nearly a full year engaged in virtual learning as opposed to in-person in their classrooms. They've been in front of screens, maybe more sedentary than they would be otherwise. And they've been isolated from some of their support systems. And many students, they've been unable to engage in the various social and physical activities that are really important for their development. So um, we're not immune to some of the things that are taking place and um, it's really helping us inform how we move forward and what type of steps that we take um, to address these problems. Okay, so like I said, looking forward, um, Anchorage Outdoor School, we are committed to equity, we're committed to inclusion, accessibility, and cultural relevance in all of our program elements. We're lowering barriers to outdoor education by creating a model that provides outdoor school to all fifth grade students, regardless of their ability to pay. We reserve one third of our program enrollment for Title I schools, students who are able to attend outdoor school free of charge. Our curriculum design and our program design, it's ongoing and it's being updated in accordance with local, state and national standards. And we're inspired by the state of Oregon's model where every sixth grader in the state attends outdoor school and their program is partially funded through the Oregon State Lottery. It's actually been legislated to be that way. Um, so we're looking to continue our successful and sustainable model with the Anchorage School District fifth graders with the intention and the goal of scaling the program into a statewide outdoor school with campuses in multiple regions. 
throughout the state. And none of this uh, would be possible without the partnerships that we have in place. Partnership is a critical aspect of this program's success. And it really makes us unique among other programs in other parts of the country in that it is a truly diverse public-private partnership of both federal and state agencies, local nonprofits, and local and state education institutions. So while this list um, acknowledges those who have dedicated time and resources and expertise at the advisory group level, there's also many other important partnerships that we have in place for people who have contributed field instructors and recreation time activities, um, some of which Adrienne mentioned during her, her video um, at the beginning of the presentation. So we are excited to continue to expand our partnerships and to bring more people in um, to the Anchorage Outdoor School program. And I'd like to end um, my section of this presentation by sharing a postcard that was mailed in by an outdoor school student after her post, post visit trip to the museum. And she said, my house is the place I call home, but there's so many places that I wish I could call home, like AOS. A home for me is where I can be myself, where I feel important and where I feel happy, which just so beautifully encapsulates uh, what we hope students feel like um, during and after their outdoor school experience. Okay. And with that, um, I'm going to introduce uh, my panelists who I brought to help me share a little bit more about the outdoor school program. So I'm going to start with Jessica Zilag, who is the executive director of the Kedai Mountains Turnigan Arm National Heritage Area. And I'm just gonna pose a quick question to her that I'll pose to all of the panelists to give her an opportunity to introduce herself and talk a little bit more about her work. So hi, Jessica. Um, curious to know from you how your, or how Outdoor School fits into your work um, and the work of the National Heritage Area. Yeah, thanks. And hi, everybody. Thanks for joining today. Um, so uh, none of, uh, what Sarah just presented and um, what has been done today could have helped, could have happened alone. It's definitely a partnership of many organizations. And the way that came out and turning an arm National Heritage Area comes into play is that we're um, considered right now kind of the operation arm of AOS. Um, the two pilots that have been run had been done in partnership uh, with staff um, dedicating their time in kind to having the program run. But um, KMTA came in at a place when the, the program was really looking to have some more stability in terms of dedicated staff, um, secured funding, and um, operationalizing the program to operate uh, over the course of more weeks or possibly more locations. So our mission as a national heritage area, and we're the only heritage area in Alaska, is to preserve, protect, and promote the unique cultural, historic, natural, and scenic resources of this area, um, which roughly stems from Girdwood uh, down to Seward. And so a part of that is we, our congressional designation is we have a management plan that calls out a few ways that we'll do our work. And one key component is to engage with youth. And so thinking about how we would do that and knowing that there was this pilot program, it really was a fantastic opportunity to marriage the two needs of AOS needing a stable um, home and secured funding with our need uh, to develop an education program. And so we came, uh, became involved in winter of 2018 and um, brought on Sarah to be our program manager uh, for outdoor school. And of course, the pandemic happened. Uh, so we're still waiting to really see this program take more flight, but um, you know, it's, it's near and dear to the heart of what we want to do as a national heritage area. And then also the location at Baggage Box Visitor Center, 90% of the heritage area is actually uh, forest service land. And so being at Baggage Box Visitor Center with the forest service and with the partners, um, when it comes to, you know, sense of place and, and being in a location to learn, um, we, there couldn't be a better location uh, in the heritage area than Portage Valley. So that's how we come into play. Great, thanks, Jessica. Next, I will introduce Melanie Sutton, who is the Anchorage School District Health and PE Coordinator. So same question to you, Melanie, how does outdoor school fit into what you do? Thanks, Sarah. 
The Anchorage School District educates nearly 41,750 students and encompasses nearly 2,000 square miles and has more than 130 schools and programs. Student learning, achievement, and lifelong success are the focus of the Anchorage School District. Equitable access and opportunities are key to building successful learning paths for each student. Our mission is to educate all students for success in life. As part of the Anchorage School District's initiative to prepare students for functional op to function optimally as global citizens and workers, the Health and Physical Education Department focuses on taking personal responsibility for one's health through active, healthy lifestyle that foster lifelong commitments to wellness. Physical education aims to develop students' physical competence, knowledge, confidence, and skills, especially those of collaboration, communication, and critical thinking through a wide range of activities that nurture positive values and attitudes, providing a good foundation for a healthy lifestyle. Outdoor adventure is one of the strands that we study in physical education. An Anchorage outdoor school is built as a cornerstone of outdoor experiences for our fifth graders. As Alaskans, we're fortunate to have incredible opportunities for outdoor recreation, as well as careers in natural resource and conservation fields. This program is an innovative way to foster a connection between our learners and their nearby public lands and get them active in the outdoors, while at the same time implementing components of fifth grade curriculum across content areas. The Anchorage School District partners with a wide range of agencies on the outdoor school, building the on the relationships that the Health and Physical Education Department has cultivated over many years. AOS brings expertise in curriculum, field trip coordination and administration, and a network of partnerships to help leverage the resources of all of our partners and nonprofits and the school district to foster the learning for our fifth grade students. It is with these partners that the Health and PE Department of the Anchorage School District began developing the Anchorage Outdoor School with a mission to cultivate that lifelong stewardship of the Alaskan public lands through residential place-based outdoor education and extend the multidisciplinary instruction beyond the classroom to improve our fifth graders' Alaskan understandings and appreciation of the state's natural resources while introducing them to real-time career opportunities with the real-life people who do them. Thanks, Melanie. That's awesome. We have a good home in the Anchorage School District Health and PE Department. Um, and so my last speaker is not Sarah Shu. that's me. Um, her name is Meredith Gutierrez and she is the Youth Engagement Coordinator for the Anchorage Park Foundation. So same question to you, Meredith, how does outdoor school fit into what you do with the Anchorage Park Foundation? Thanks, Sarah. Can you guys hear me? I have new headphones, awesome. So um, with the Anchorage Park Foundation as Youth Engagement Coordinator, one of my positions is as the Schools on Trails Coordinator. And what I do is help teachers get kids outside. Um, and within that, it's connecting to the Park Foundation's mission to connect uh, people to their local parks, trails, and natural public lands. And so Schools on Trails is just a natural fit to go with outdoor school, especially with the partnership with the school district, is that I help support teachers going outside. And sometimes that's just being an extra adult. Sometimes that's offering curriculum. Sometimes that's offering a partnership of somebody who could come and teach for them or supplies or brainstorming or whatever that is. And so helping teachers to go to outdoor school um, is a natural bridge for that. So that when they come back, it is you had such a great time at outdoor school. Your kids learned such an amazing thing in such amazing way. How can we now do that on a regular basis within Anchorage and making those connections? Um, schools on Trails is also built off of partnerships. And so within those partnerships, um, almost everybody that I work with in environmental education within Anchorage also works on outdoor school because we all recognize its power and its importance um, to the students of Anchorage and the state as a whole. And we wanna be sure that every student is having that same opportunity. Um, 
what we found and what everybody generally knows is that outdoor opportunities are not always equal. And so outdoor school is another way that we could offer to students that maybe don't go camping every weekend with their parents or don't have access to get out hiking. Um, this is a way that they can go and do those things. Um, so all every time schools on trails take students outside, it's a way that we are trying to plant a seed for the future that when those students then grow up, they want to take care of their public lands. And if they can rely on those memories and those experiences when they're younger, um, it can help as they get older to do those things. Great, thanks Meredith. Um, so I'd like to open it up very briefly um, if there's any questions. Um, and if you guys are still thinking, I'll pose another question to the panelists. Um, so you can either put it in the chat or unmute and put yourself on video to ask. Thank you. Okay. No questions from the audience yet. So we will carry on. Um, one thing that I'd love to know from all of you is um, a highlight, right, uh, from being involved in the outdoor school program, maybe speaking to something that um, we haven't heard, you know, through exploring what the program is and how it's run and why we're doing it. Um, if there's anything in particular that jumps out in your memory um, from your all experiences during the program. Feel free to just jump in. I'll jump in first then. Oh. Um, from, from the school district perspective, I remember when we went to Creekside to introduce this Creekside Park, um, to introduce this to the parent night. Um, and we were talking with parents about all the details of a residential um, place-based education outside. And it was new to quite a few parents, um, just the concept of taking their kids away and into nature and um, to explore all these different things. We had our fifth grade teachers there, our very supportive principal there, um, who were all going to be coming with us along with the um, staff and crew. But what was most impactful to me was that even the BPO, who um, the janitor for the school, the building plant operator, um, came to help out, came to be there to um, not only help um, communicate to the, the families um, in a language that they understood, but also to, to advocate for a program which he saw as valuable, even though he wasn't gonna be one attending, he knew it would be valuable for the students that were getting that opportunity. And then seeing those exact same kids at Portage um, later when they attended was just amazing. They were down by the water. They, they were um, knee deep in, in pulling rocks out in little um, aquatic life. And they were so excited and running back and forth to each other to tell about their discoveries. It was a very damp kind of overcast day. And it could have been one of those days where they're like, uh, maybe indoor recess, but these kids were passionately outside and excited and having a blast and so well equipped to be out there and so well supported and learning so much from so many professionals and it was just an, an amazing um, experience from beginning to end with that group. Sarah could I quick tell one of my that um, I have one from that same group within the first half an hour of their first field study, the principal had come in to tell us um, he just had a student who usually is very reluctant at school run up to him and say, why can't all school be like this? And so it was so impactful for us just even our first hour of operating ever um, to have that moment in those moments of especially with our title one schools. Um, we invited Willow Crest and their principal would tell us about how they have students that they live, you know, two miles from the ocean, yet they've never seen it because they're not high enough up and they never go to the hillside. And so here we get to bring them down the Turnigan arm. And then it's the same. I work with uh, youth employment and parks during the summer. I'm the field educator for them during my summertime. And we have teenagers that have been born and raised in Anchorage who have never seen a glacier. 
And that to me just, it breaks my heart a little bit. So to offer this opportunity, like at least by fifth grade, every kid in Anchorage is gonna have seen a glacier and understand how they work and why they're so important for us. Um, and so those moments, just kids talking about, it's raining outside, we can't go outside. And it's like, yes, we can, we just wear rain gear. And oh, my parents would never let me go outside like this before. And those moments are numerous within our, um, within our program and just continue to build and build on the, the power of what it is that we're doing. Thanks, Meredith. Jessica, I wanna give you the opportunity to answer that question, but also we had a question in the chat come up that I think um, might be best directed at you. It says, can you describe the financials for this program, who contributes, who pays, and how is the program sustained? Yeah, so I got real quick on, experience that I remember. So I um, am not an educator, but, um, you know, appreciate those who are really skilled in their craft. And I followed along for two of the field um, studies in the fall. So Glorious Glaciers and um, Portage's Place. And just seeing instructors not only be able to, to teach their skill and their knowledge and their trade, you know, to kids, but um, being at a place where you could observe um, quite dramatically the world around you and what the instructor is talking about. So to, to be looking at glaciers and to be standing on a moraine and to communicate with kids like how glaciers recede and form and, and what that means to the environment and being right there in that place, it's pretty profound and, and has a huge impact on kids and their ability to learn. And I, I learned things. Um, you know that you just you you have this place where you were when you learned it so it's, it's a lot easier um to have at home at home so um and then to answer so there's a question in the chat about uh the financials for the program who contributes who pays and how is it sustained so right now it's a mix of public private and foundational um funds so the public dollars are um, federal funds with KMTA um, contributing a part of our congressional designation or appropriation um, to sustain year round staffing. Um, also Fish and Wildlife uh, has contributed funds, Park Service has contributed funds. Um, and then there's an enormous amount of in kind um, with all of these partners. So then the private dollars, um, so there is a fee for students to attend. Uh, we reserve one third of our attendance for Title I students to attend for free, but uh, there is a fee, it's $150 per student. So we identify the schools about eight months out that will be participating and then uh, work with the PTA um, to fundraise for those students um, to be able to attend. And then the third amount of funding has come from foundational dollars. Uh, the National Park Foundation has contributed. Uh, we're also uh, aggressively pursuing other grant opportunities. Uh, we recently received a grant from the um, River Network to develop a, a set of curriculum uh, focused on forest and stream ecology and life cycle of salmon. Um, and then we've received some private donations. Uh, that's currently the funding structure, but in order to sustain the program, um, to really meet our goals of serving every fifth grader in the Anchorage School District and then to grow into a statewide program that services every fifth grader in the state, um, we're going to need to look to models much like what Oregon did of like long term sustainable funding um, and really, you know, test the waters of like, is this a, is this something that we, we're committed to as a state to educate our, our children and I think the model has proven successful throughout the country. Um, there's a lot of outdoor schools um, that, that follow the same model of working through the school district and it's a overnight residential program. Um, but we, we need to um, think about how do we fund then that education. And um, that's what our advisory group is working on. We're currently going through a business plan um, planning process right now. The National Park Service RTCA program is um, coordinating that and so That'll speak more to the, the long term growth of the program. Great. Hope hope that answers your question. Um, I'll pose one more to to the panel here. Um, Jessica mentioned that uh, the advisory group has been, you know, hard at work um, while we haven't been able to run our program. So. 
curious to hear from Melanie and Meredith and Jessica again, um, you know, what are some of those things that we have been doing while we have been unable to run our programs? Um, and, you know, if any, either any one of you <laughs> um, would like to speak in particular to some of the things that the advisory group has been, has been doing to, to continue to move the program forward. I'll give it a shot and then everyone else can chime in. Um, during the COVID has provided us a unique opportunity to take a look at what we'd already done and all the different um, uh, pilots that we had run prior to COVID to really fine tooth the curriculum. Um, we worked really hard on developing through the River Network grant um, some new uh, place based study books. And um, we've even developed a few new partners. So we've um, partnered with UAA with their um, HPR department health, um, PE, and recreation. Um, we're also working very hard to make sure that when we get to take our students back to Portage or potentially other places, that we are really in-depth, partnered, supported, so that we have everything we need to make it successful again, that we have it nailed down, dialed in, and even with a few new bells and whistles to make it even more special. Uh, I, I would also, I would echo Melanie's, it's actually for us been almost a little blessing. We'd all rather be in person and out doing active education, but to be able to take this time to make sure that our foundations are strengthened, they're solid and focus on that sustainability factor. Um, I've worked at outdoor schools in the lower 48. And they can come and go if you don't really make sure that your foundations are strong. And what makes us unique from those programs is this partnership piece. Um, most times it's one organization that's making decisions and then might invite people to come and participate, but they don't necessarily um, let their those participants help make decisions of what the program should look like. And so because of this partnership and um, these branch of our program, um, we can, the year we've spent strengthening those programs, it's like we are on the cusp of having such an amazing, unique and um, program that is different than most of the schools that are in the lower 48 for that. And it's just another way of Alaska working together and Alaska embracing what is important to us, which is definitely the outdoors and how can we together do this thing that's important and that taking this year to make those things happen is has been amazing. I just add that there's there's no better opportunity than a crisis to start planning for the future. So we all would rather be in person for sure, but um, we're basically ready to go. Um, and there's a lot of hope that we'll be able to begin operating this fall um, and we're also looking at what, um, you know, year round programming looks like evenings or weekends or even a summer, um, school program, but, um, you know, until, until we're, we're on the other side of the pandemic, we're, we're doing our best to be ready for that future day. Sarah, could I do one more? I'd love to also give an invitation. I don't, um, some of the names I recognize in the meeting today, but if you are a recreation person or a educator of any sort, please, we um, love to bring the community together. And if you're, even if you'd like to come for one day a week for an hour and a half to fat tire bike or hike or um, teach fly fishing, you know, we, we want to bring our Alaska community to outdoor school to share your knowledge um, with the next generation. So please feel free to reach out to us. Or if you know people who might be interested, please give them our contact information um, because that is what we're building um, is not just experiences for the students, but it's really a community around this organization. So just to put that out there, I'll make sure that I feel like we said partner a lot, but <laughs> that is really the important part for us. That is the strength, that is the model for our students to show how our students come together, 
but how our community comes together to support our students so that when our students become the adults in our community, they too are supportive of each other and Alaska. It's the model. Um, thank you for that, Meredith. That's a, an excellent transition into the end of our, our time together here. Um, so I'll put my name and email address in the chat box as well as the link to our page on Anchorage Outdoor School. And, um, you know, I think uh, another just like truly remarkable aspect is we, like we really do have this very strong group of people who are very invested in outdoor education. And Lee, I feel like as that relates to some of the advocacy work that you're doing on behalf of active transportation and outdoor recreation industry, like when you see things moving at the legislative level as it relates to an outdoor equity fund or outdoor education, you know that there is this group of people who is ready to voice their support and stand up and say, yes, we absolutely like want to dedicate resources and time and energy um, at all levels um, to projects like this. So, you know, we're, we're certainly fortunate to have found the silver lining of the pandemic and and really taken the time to strengthen strengthen our team so that we can move forward in the future like as a as a strong unit um, that's really grounded in what we're trying to do and i i think with that we'll we'll call it <laughs> All right, great. Um, hey, thank you, ladies, um, uh, for such a great presentation. And I learned a lot, and I feel like I'm on this steep upward curve of learning where a lot of the outdoor recreation resources are around the state. I was um, lucky enough to get invited to a Forest Service um, meeting of all of, uh, of, of many groups doing similar work, but certainly not quite like outdoor school. But um, I'm, I'm thrilled to see how much is out there and how much we can build on that. Um, like you said, when it comes time to be asking the legislature to do something about it. So um, anyway, thank you everyone for, um, for participating in today's Lunch and Learn. Um, we'll be re we did record this session and so it will be um, 